Hi. Welcome to part two of my video series, uh, The Gear to Shoot USPSA. I'm going to go over the basic gear you need to get started and a few other things that will help you along the way. A great place to start is a good range bag. And in the range bag, I would have eye protection, any kind of safety glasses will do, or if you're like me and already wear glasses, those will work. Ear protection, either the over-the-ear style or the in-ear foam buds, both work equally well. At least 200 rounds of your favorite ammunition. A plastic bag, it helps to clean up or if you want to pick up spent brass. And one that's not commonly mentioned is an old towel. Because as you're shooting and reloading, you will drop magazines on the ground and you want to wipe them off before using them so dirt doesn't make them into your gun. Now let's talk about the gun. Always for safety when handling a firearm, you want to make sure that it's not loaded and you do so by first ejecting the magazine and making sure that it's empty, and then pulling back the slide and making sure that the chamber is also empty. If you already own a gun, you can visit USPSA.org, and under the rules section, there is a very extensive list of guns that are allowed for competition. I'm using a Ruger SR9C, which is the compact version of the full-size Ruger SR9, and with it, I'm using the full-size 17-round magazine with a grip extension, which allows it to fit comfortably in the compact frame. If you're looking for a recommendation as to what gun to buy to shoot the production division with, I would recommend any 9mm striker fired full size frame or compact frame that allows the use of a full size magazine like I'm using. The reason for this is there is no added advantage to shooting any caliber larger than 9mm. And there are a couple other small advantages to having a striker-fired gun with a full-size magazine, which I will talk more about in the video on tips and tricks. These guns include, but are not limited to, the Glock 17 and Glock 19, the Springfield XD and XDM, the Ruger SR9 and SR9C, and the Smith & Wesson MNP9, Military and Police. These guns are extremely popular and very widely available, new or used. Once you've selected your gun, next you need a holster. USPSA recommends a Kydex holster, and I'm using a Kydex belt holster made by Phobos. I specifically recommend a belt holster versus a paddle style holster because the paddle style has a tendency to come loose when you rapidly dry your gun. When selecting a holster, what you're looking for is a holster that has an easy, smooth draw, but still has enough tension to retain the gun so it doesn't fall out as you're moving around. Also, you don't want any kind of positive retention, meaning you don't want a strap that goes across the back, or you don't want a button that you have to push to release your gun. You want the gun to release from the draw alone. Once you have your holster, next USPSA recommends having five magazines. One in the gun and four extras. With the magazines, I also highly recommend an easy loader. It will save a lot of time and sore fingers. Next, to put your magazines into, you need magazine holders. USPSA recommends having Kydex magazine holsters similar to the holster. I'm using Uncle Mike's uh, double belt holster. Like I said, I don't recommend having a paddle style. These are also available in single. And same thing as when you're looking for a magazine holder, you want one that holds your magazine securely so they don't fall out as you're moving around, but still have a smooth draw so you can pull them out quickly. The great thing about this magazine holder is it has this little screw right here which allows you to adjust the tension to your liking. And finally, you need a belt. When selecting a belt, you want one that is thick enough, strong enough, and stiff enough to support the weight of all of your gear without flexing too much. I'm using a police duty belt. 
but if you're looking for something a little more competition oriented, a CR speed weld would work great. This is what the rig looks like when it's all put together. Because I'm right handed, the gun is holstered on my right hand side, and my magazines are on my left. Everything is tight and secure, and is set behind my head buttons. And I can easily draw the gun and reholster it without any binding or difficulty. This rig here cost me about $650, including the gun. So as you can see, shooting USPSA isn't very expensive, especially if you already own the gun, because the major part of the cost is the gun itself. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay tuned for my next video on what to expect during your first USPSA match.